hi, I'm a founder of Quit. <laughs> the thing's the wrong way up. Okay, I'm going to try again. Something said, okay, one. Okay, when you go live with someone, anyone can watch it, then that doesn't help me. Requests. Okay, so she says requests. So I'm saying add. Waiting for Abigail, man, we're waiting for you. Um, waiting, waiting. So connecting, it says connect. Ah, oh, she's here. I'm here. Oh my God, I'm beyond excited. You won't believe what's been going on in your absence. So I set it up right. No, first of all, I have to go like this because I've got a brand new plastic stand that only allows my phone to go that way. Oh, wow. Yeah, never mind, we'll deal with well, it. I can, we'll deal with it. I can see I can see half of your face, Helen. Okay, So that's good. That's probably the best half. And welcome, <laughs> Abigail. And all these wonderful people have joined. I've seen names. Your cousin is a member of this group. Uh, and, yes, and, uh, she's is, coming. She's she's coming to to to, to support. She's thrilling, great. thrilling, and more people are coming in. And obviously, every so often, I will be doing that. But that <laughs> that is, I don't know why I'm having to do that. But it's a thing we can solve. So, um, how exciting! So, Abigail Mann, writer, star of waving. People keep waving at me. It's so exciting. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just I'm sorry. I've never done this before. So, this is a new toy. This is a new although toy. Some people probably thought I had done it many times, obviously, my slipness. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Abigail Mann, glorious writer. Obviously, we don't have to big you, we can big you up in a kind of consistent way because we've okay. got a whole session. So, I don't want to do, just, yeah. I don't want to go peak, peak, and then we run out of superlatives for you. But, <laughs> Abigail Mann, I'm holding your book up to the recipients of this. Is the writing going backwards or is it? Is it it's real? on the side and it's also mirrored <laughs> so it's doing a number of things <laughs> okay so this is my way of really showcasing the wordage of the lonely fajita so now i um my very good friend kath eastman suggested that i request as more people join the group come in it's like we're in the groucho club come in it everyone. Is. <laughs> Sit on a cushion with us, on a velvet cushion. Pull up a chair, get yourself a drink. Come I on. Pulled a warm I um, pulled a warm beer. Oh, so... that, oh, you've got warm. Why is it warm? Is that, you prefer it that way? Uh, it's or? my fault. I forgot to put it in the fridge. Okay. So... There are worse things. Um, there are worse things. <laughs> there we go. And uh, so if you'd like to look at my glass, um, I Yay! must have drink it the wrong way. It's <laughs> cassis. It's like you're about to pour yours into mine. I, I know. It's like one of those joke glasses that you get in the joke shop. <laughs> Um, Rose, I quite like uh, it. It's cassis with carver. So cheers Ooh. and cheers to all our cheers, lovely cheers. and and lovely Abigail. If you can see anybody saying anything, you must yeah, them out. I mean, not just mm -hmm. your cousin, although obviously she's v welcome. So cheers, everyone. Here's to our very first Wednesday. Can't remember the title of it, Abigail. Uh, what did we decide? It was um quip witty so, wednesday drop in that's it we're so professional we're so on it um it's very exciting because the long list of quip is going to be um ready on monday and abigail you are a product of quip i see yes. you as, there's a kind of birthing dna relationship from me to you if it doesn't sound too icky but um no we can work with that that's fine so what did you feel when you heard that you had won the quit prize for unfit published um i well i was in the be emotional emotion first. okay yeah i'm gonna channel it go um uh let's start with the fact that i had had three sparkling wines and okay. so oh to explain were... to the viewers to the viewers where were you in the room yes um yeah so we were the, the, the winners event um Posh Club in london yeah, posh, posh, posh club in Soho, Soho that I didn't think I'd be allowed access to, and yet I was. So that was a nice surprise. Really, um, In fact, I said to the person on the reception desk, "I think I'm meant to be here," <laughs> which isn't um, Did they care? necessarily. Did they respond in any way? <laughs> uh, a simpering, sort of withering smile. It's harsh in um, London, and a lot of the dairy. people maybe don't. Live, it can be harsh in the days of old when people went out, and the main thing is not to be put off by the lack of smiling is because everyone is sad and unhappy and needs to write comedy <laughs> books or read yours rather. So you go in, you say, I think I should be here. Yeah. I think I should be here. And then there were uh, lots of really lovely people who knew that I should be there. Um, yeah. And so sort of 
ushered me downstairs and put wine into my hand, which was nice. Yes. Um, and then we, myself and the other um, shortlisted um, unpublished writers, we yes. sort of like banded together in a little group and yes. people spotted around the room. And were you being um, nice and supportive to each other, even though oh, secretly yeah. you all wanted the, you know, the gem? -za. Of course, yeah, of course. But then I think because we, well, I think just generally everyone's really supportive in this particular community, community anyway. We're going um, to make them even more supportive because we understand, don't we, that, well, because yeah. I'm old and bitter and you're young and not bitter, I, I am, as a stand-up, there wasn't the um, closeness, should we say, because we're all fighting to get the same the job. Same but, spot, yeah. But with you but I think, and your yeah, generation, I think, I think how is it? It's more like there's a, there's a seat at the table for everybody and uh, you just hope that no one's going to like pull the seat out before yeah. you sit down. Yeah. Um, oh, I like that analogy. So first of all, you the assumption is there's a place for everyone, but you yeah. don't want to be pipped at the post. I think that's fair enough. I think that's yeah, a, I think a so. fair, fair play. So it's good, but it's a little bit edgy and that's life. So you're there, mm. you, you're in your group, you're in your coterie. Yeah. We were sort of ushered, ushered, ushered towards the front. So I was like quite happily in my little crowd at this point. Um, and then I think it was Jenny Eclair started mm. describing um, the, the book that had, that had gotten the, the runners up prize. And I was thinking, that sounds a lot like my book. Oh, um, and were you kind <laughs> of like disappointed or thrilled? No, thrilled. And then I think it was um, Lottie, who was another of the shortlisted authors, started nudging me with her elbow. Oh and and I was oh. and I just shook my head because I was like, no, 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 it's oh. not for me. Um, emotional, it's emotional. And then people turned around to sort of like look, and uh, and then someone pushed me up onto um, onto the stage. And you were wearing um, a red dress, if I recall. Yes, yeah. yes. That sounded kind of like I was your fiance to be. Like, <laughs> but it wasn't that. I was just remembered because I was in. I was quite sweating a lot at the time. Yeah. So they pushed As you was up. I. It they was pushed a sweaty you up. Night. It was very hot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I got up to I got up to the podium and um, red dress, sweaty hands, and then Marion Marion was there, you were there, and then Jilly Cooper was about an arm's length away and um, looking just glorious. Turquoise. Um, she was wearing turquoise, which is the colour of was. your book. Yeah, yeah. It was serendipitous. Babe, yeah, yeah. Day. Um, the writer. Cup. And yeah. I couldn't think of a single thing to say, so I was, I I said. My hands are really sweaty, and then I think <laughs> nice. everyone just like laughed, and I was yeah. like, "Okay, I can do okay. this. This is fine." You can have one of those, um, but then try and say something of substance now. <laughs> kind of yeah, because exactly. audiences and can was... be harsh. The expectation is huge wherever you are. Yeah, yeah, and I hadn't prepared anything. I mean, why would I would be very presumptuous to prepare anything? Well, um, you were funny. I remember that. I... Um, and actually, it's interesting when you we when we think about sort of funny people, naturally funny people, of which you are and your naturally funny book is that you can just do it because you're in your head. So I remember you going, oh, wow, you weren't kind of phased, but you were suitably humble, but you said some funny things, which I think is important. Do you know what I mean? You just got to yeah, kind yeah. of be in, be, get into the funny and that will carry you through. But, uh, but yeah, I, exactly. I and I'm pleased that you were pleased. That's a, it is a big moment. Oh my gosh, yeah, completely. I mean, I was, I, mean, I already felt like I had won to a certain extent because um, this shortlist, when this shortlist happened, and I think this happened with a couple of the other um, shortlisted writers as well, where we then got emails sent to us from agents asking to to send in manuscripts, and so well, I after been or this before before the the, oh. uh, the the winners event. Okay, so I'm just needing more glory here. So let's just be absolutely crystal. So after you, but so I, I just need to take responsibility. No, I don't. I've just had too much cassis and carver. You can, as my, so, my surrogate comedy mother, you can. Uh, I am, I am. I mean, because I didn't get it, I want other people to get it in a bitter sort of way. So there's some <laughs> vitriol, but so there's some pleasure as well, just. Um, so, um, so agents, so you did you have an agent then? when you sent in your manuscript, let's just do that. Because people always ask about agents if they're writers. Mm. No, I hadn't. So um, uh, I had been like building a list of ones that I thought might be a good fit that I was gonna, I was gonna target after the competition because I thought it might help my case. Um, but then when the shortlist was announced and because our, the synopses of our books were on the, the Quip website. Okay, so it's what I so think it that's, I, I yeah, just... that's what, 
that's see, what I'm they do. I think so they should see it. Mm. Read but, it. But I know seen the ones they thought they might like and then and then got in contact with us after that. Okay. Um, okay. So that helped a lot. And then when that when the first one came in and the email came in, I thought, right, well I've got to I've got to send them out now. Um, so we, so we did, and then I think it was within uh, twenty four hours they <gasps> had had some requests come through. But you see, um, that, that is amazing because it tells me that what I kind of knew that there's all this talent out there, but it just needs to be presented. And also, publishers really only want to make money. Let's, I mean, they're nice too, and often they've got similar names and they are nice people. But, but at the end of the day, they're not going to invest in anything. Uh, certainly not now, um, unless they're going to get their payoff. So they and people like what they call career writers so they are talent scouting so i hadn't realized that harper collins had the pick the pick of all these people i did all their work for them and, very clever very clever yes, um and and then so people were looking at platforms and organizations and alerted to it and this is just this is for everyone actually anyone can have one idea you know, I mean, I have several ideas and I've got so many rejection slips of which we will discuss um, in, my, you know, so much rejection in my life. But sometimes you can have one thing and then it goes. And it's just really weird because this thing was an idea. It's a charity. So all those lovely people, including your cousin, you know, this is a charity for me. So we need support. We need for it to continue we need to grow this and we need to get support, but that's, you know, that's just real, slightly boring um, compared to you and your red dress accepting your award. But, um, <laughs> it, but it's interesting how one idea then came, then you got wind of it, then you, then you, um, you were then on the website and then you got the agent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it was the, the, well, like timing wise as well, I think with comedy writing written by women as well at this in this particular past couple of years that yeah. they're finally the sort of people who have woken up to the idea that actually <laughs> it's within our remit as well to write novels like at length that are um can sustain well width. Wow. You, had, you had already written this novel because here's here's the thing of quip is that the the person enters it and it's eight thousand words and then from that, it's long listed. And then because there's such a tiny turnaround, unless you're a, I don't know what, or you're finding a secret one and copying it, um, you've got like two weeks to turn it around and then hand in the manuscript. So it's kind of, it's quite harsh. But what was fascinating on the first year was to know there are so many people who've written a novel who, who must have the almost semblance of a total novel to send in. So you already mm. have that, presumably, unless you are one of those rare geniuses no, but who can what write I did, in two weeks. What I did do, I, so I, I started the book in um, September of the year, sort of, so I think you announced the competition, it was open in the October. Yeah. I had started writing it in the September and then saw a tweet of yours in December saying, mm. this is the competition, this is what it's about. And I was just like, well, that seems like a good fit. And so I used then the, the deadline of the, of the competition entry it, to finish to my, to finish but my you book. Had it, but you did have it. So let's go back. So, so you um, had another job, presumably, but you knew that you wanted to write a novel. So you were writing the novel, you know, like yeah. blind in a way. And, and that's the thing. When you write on spec, it's very different from writing to a deadline. So, oh, completely, yeah, yeah. Which your... is what I'm doing now, yeah. And, and I, it, it wasn't going. It wasn't. It wasn't going to be um, a contemporary comedy at all. It was a. I started. I, so I quit my job to 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 do to do this, and um, mm. moving back down from Sheffield. And I was a teacher prior to this. You see, um, I like you when you're a teacher because, um, ladies and gentlemen, who I have to go like that to read. We have to read their lovely comments and men. You did actually train me as did Kath. I had two people training me because I've never done this before. Actually, it feels really lovely, although I don't think it's right. It's that way right. But so you gave up your job to write a novel. So you yeah. were that committed. I mean, that's yeah, very brave. I think it was partly because I need, um, I need the knowledge that other people are expecting something um, helps with the follow through of it. Just like if, you, you know, like if you're doing a yoga class via Zoom, I mean, who's going to know if you just sort of... <laughs> 
sit, yes. sit or to one side and no, no one it. no can i just tell you no one just to confirm that <laughs> and I would do my Rosemary Connolly, as you know, my DVD, because I haven't understood the Zoom thing on the thing. And I know Rosemary, well, I think she went bankrupt, actually. So she's, you know, she wears a T-shirt that... She's ties, now she's sat over. to one side. She's, yeah, she wears a T-shirt that ties up. Do you remember? You know, you're too young, but there were... Anyway, so you gave up your job to write yeah. this thing. Yeah, and I, but I had spent a year alongside uh, teaching, researching a historical novel, um, wow. and I was all ready to get going with it. And then when I stopped teaching and I went, sat down to write this, this quite heavy historical it's so novel. Different. It's so different, but you're funny. You're a funny person. That's well, so that's weird. why I think it was such a bloody struggle. Because <laughs> um, I was trying to write this historical novel and then it just wasn't, it just wasn't working at all. And then started doing a bit of um, free writing, just see what felt, what felt natural asked some other people like if, if I was going to write any genre of book what do you think it would be and they were like oh, probably something that was a bit funny yeah. so then I just completely changed track God, ditched that, the but lot, that's ditched really that helpful again. Abigail for, for other people because we all know and I was doing this today you know when you know when something isn't right and oh. you don't know why it isn't right but it isn't right but it's laudable and you were going into the right area you knew you could write but unless it's coming unless it's natural unless it mm, connects um uh it isn't it, it it's just going to be pain yeah I mean, writing exactly. is painful, but you know so one day you might yeah it's always, it's always painful to an, an extent but i mean i was feral like a feral human when i was yeah. trying to write that historical thing and mm. people would ask how it was going and it would be like this fire would yes just come and rain how down did it but... take before you thought right this, this scary a year and a half I get it. Um, yeah. th that was not like so. I that was whilst I was teaching, and then a little bit afterwards, and then when then I started writing comedy, and by all means, um, was easier to live with. Yeah. Um, and when you say you started writing comic, you you mean you wrote your comedy? Yeah. Book, yeah. You started, doing... write, started writing the book, knowing that yeah, I, that's that's the that's the feeling I wanted to leave somebody with that they had had they had had a, a fun uh, they had had fun they had been entertaining and that there was. Um, uh, something about the, the voice and the character that would stay with them in the same same way that like a really good character led like comedy series that was the kind of thing that I was going to I was so trying you, to, yeah. to aim for. So you that's that's very helpful to, to know that you that you would like to read it it's it's a book that you would like to read and that gets closer to your own narrative so but did you do you ever do that thing where you go oh this is very self-conscious oh this is crunchy oh do you do that? When you were writing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially reading bits back. Especially if I've been tired and I've read something back that I read that I wrote when I was tired, and it truly or drunk. Does. no, yeah, it, one or the other. Yeah, and it just yeah, it it's it's almost it's almost physically painful to read back because you think this is so far from <laughs> being acceptable. And but there's always, I mean, usually those you have bits, to there's color. Always, there's always, you just get rid. So you know when um, I sometimes go on Twitter and then people, there was one a, a writer who's very brainy and bright, and she will go something like five thousand. Yep, yeah, that's my five thousand a day. And you just go, I hate you right now because sometimes you, um, you could maybe just write like spend the morning on a sentence. I know, and then you talk to people who have proper jobs, and then you just go that. And then lie down, as I say, my thing is to watch um, three in a bed in the afternoon or four in a bed, just to calm down. But sometimes that's, it takes that long. And other times you can do 2,000 in a day, maybe. I mm. mean, but that's a lot though, isn't it? 2000. Yeah, and I, think, I mean, I'm yeah, not, on, I've never On my that. writing days, I do, yeah. It's like, it's 2,000, 2,000 a day on, on writing days. And then on days where I ha have to go into work as well, it's like 500, 500 words after work before I'm allowed to go home. But that's still um, good, that's still good. So that's the, the sort of the aim. Otherwise, yeah, I could easily just, oh, I'll just go down a little Wikipedia wormhole and then all of a yeah. sudden you're reading about like a, a Mormon cult um, in the 1960s that well, has no relevance to what you're doing whatsoever. No relevance, but engaging and distracting, as are a lot of things on the thing. So should we read... Oh, this is so exciting. See, I, just that, that whole history, and we haven't even heard the half of it, really, I, I, I'm really interested in that. Do you think other people are? I'm hoping they might be. That, I yeah, know there's cousin someone, is, someone has asked um, what the name oh. of the book is. Um, and oh. yeah, it's the, the Lonely Fajita. The Lonely Fajita. And it's got, a, it's got like... A, person on it who looks like a little fajita 
And um, and so now I'm going to pretend I'm um, Andrew Marr and go, so Abigail, what drew you to the title, L The Lonely Fajita? In um, the, yeah. Well, Andrew. Um, <laughs> I've always wanted to be Andrew, actually. Big ears. More. No, I didn't say um, that. Go. Yeah, the, so the uncool answer is that I was in my brother's kitchen. Um, he was working from home and I said, I've got two hours to submit this to quit and I haven't got a title for it yet. So I checked him the first three chapters. He then read it and we were trying to come up with ideas and he was sending, he was putting post-it notes on the table and oh, I was trying to think of things. And... Who did you, who is this you're talking to? This is my brother, Linford. Your brother, I like your brother. Yeah. God, how kind oh my god that's helpful <laughs> so he so he he's has I said as a joke um why don't you call it the lonely fajita because it's part of a line um of dialogue in the in the first few chapters um and I laugh my first reaction was to laugh and yeah. I was like well if it, it's probably gonna get changed at some point and at least it's memorable so I'll put that in oh it is because it because it could be anything see I just, yeah I saw this as a very um exotic uh, I don't know, the, the words, Mahita, Mustafa, Tatata, you know, it could be, like, weird. No, but but would you say it is a, um, bringing, I'm now, I'm learning how to be um, Victoria Derbyshire now. This is a, and so okay, would, right, and would with, you with say, Victoria, take okay. a sip, take a sip, I've, I'm on the second. I hope our lovely readers um, are also sipping. So um, would you say that this is a Bridget Jones for your time? I know that's not how Victoria Derbyshire speaks to her. I'm sorry, I'm channeling <laughs> so many people at the moment. Rose McConnell included. So is it a Bridget Jones um, genre? I think there's definitely elements of it in there. I mean, it's, I mean, a lot of what... I, I, think, I think my character, Alyssa, would be very envious of Bridget's life because she's... Bridget's a little bit older and yet has her own flat in London Bridge yeah. and has a series of actually pretty decent jobs that she is still a bit shit at. I tell you um, what, pretty decent is the word. She's in blooming television. So it's, it's the white privilege there, which we're all told off for uh, channeling too much without awareness. But crack on, yes. Yeah, and, and uh, so, yeah, Alyssa would be delighted to have um, that sort of living situation. But she, I think she maybe more accurately represents people who are in their sort of mid-twenties who have moved to London Peckham. and trying to make something of themselves. Yes. Um, yes. But having to live with a number of housemates, having to do unpaid internships, um, and right. sort of assuming that they need a, a, a partner or a boyfriend to fit some sort of picture, mm. but actually it's not really serving them in any way. Oh, I really like that. That's intelligent and also makes me feel comfortable. I mean, do, Thanks, these, do these people have to have an, a conventional education? Because I find that more and more when you meet that group of people, it's less and less of an elite now. I mean, some people have gone to university, fine, but some people haven't. Some people choose not to. So I do not think that the melting pot now, the voice, um, is more cosmopolitan. You don't get like a one track, ed, you know. No, I'm, I didn't. I'm I, from I, uni, I, la, you know. I mean, yeah, I think I think there is definitely more of that, and there could be could be even even more so. I think there's certain. Um, certain industries as well that perhaps weren't even about 20 years ago, like Elissa works for a, in, a, in a tech startup, yep. um, which, um, I mean, I've worked in a couple before, and they are such bizarre environments because a lot of the time your boss is barely older than you. Because <laughs> and you're they've... young. So you must have <laughs> oh, no, I, once, I, once had a, I once had an interview with a tech startup where the, the person interviewing me looked at my date of birth and said, oh, if we employ you, I'll still be the youngest here. <laughs> now, hang on, what does that mean? Because my brain doesn't work very well. What does that mean? You have to explain that. So if they employed, meaning he was old or young, what was the point? He was young. So I think I oh. interviewed there when I was... <laughs> 22 yeah and he was the boss and he was younger than me oh my god that's mad that is funny so this, to me you're yeah. very young you will always be young because well you just will be because i'm will always be older but i but i like that so this is a kind of a uh, contemporary version mm. um now do you feel and you're on your second book and i'm jumping away but i'd like to be in your world that do things date do do I mean are we but that's fine are we grabbing are we grabbing a moment and um, disseminating it back so that people can connect or is there more is there kind of like a point a parable a kind of 
a thing, you know, like I, story that mm. means what, you know? I hope, I think there's some, some, some elements of it that are definitely, I'm going to use the word pervasive. I um, love pervasive. It's kind pervasive. of like insidious, the word insidious. I wonder if they're related. No, pervasive. What is pervasive? Pervasive, mean? pervasive meaning um, it's going to, the, the issue is something in this instance, like an issue that's going to keep coming up again and again yes um, like no matter it. what sort of decade it is and that being sort of the idea of being in a very popular city enduring at the same yes, time I being like quite isolated and um, mm. i mean that i think is going to be a sort of tale as old as time but then the idea of um somebody having to go through a number of unpaid internships or internships where you get expenses only i'm hoping will be something that people would read back on perhaps in a few years and be like, that was a weird time, wasn't it? Do, we well, we're hoping, jobs but, for free. Um, but now, of course, well, I, like I'm the Oracle, of course, um, refer to me. It seems I've heard that our economy is not going to recover for a while. So um, our hopes for righting the wrongs of when we were in the money might have to be put back a little bit. <laughs> but, but that's interesting. So your character is that... Um, I, I was looking at it before, um, a thing, I had a smear test and it wasn't horrendous. Mind you, I don't always like people reading out lo the selected lines of my, when I wrote my book, because then you go, that's not representative, but you've got a real, but you are a really, it's so easy to read. And that's a, the biggest compliment, isn't it? Because yeah, when I read yeah. back over my stuff and you go, ah, so over explained, ah, it's just got to kind of hang. So this hangs, doesn't it? Well, I hope. I, yeah, I hope oh, so. Does. I want. I. I hope that it's. Um, it's the kind of book that people can read. In it, I need to use the truth words carefully here to not like downplay it. But it's like it's. It's almost. You know, when you you put something on TV or you mm. read a book because you know that by the end of that action, you're gonna feel a little bit better, oh, or yes. you, you don't have to analyze everything. It's gonna entertain you. It's, yes. it's not gonna necessarily. Um, make you have to look up things in but i love well you did use the word pervasive but um but what <laughs> but i absolutely agree with you and this is like again a, a really interesting thing about comedy writing because when i had to do a posh program recently a, a good read and then i chose the david nichols one um the understudy the, and the reason book. i chose that was because i thought that just was in it demonstrated it was a story like yours is a story now so he's got this thing to find the thing you love and do it to the best of your ability you know what no matter what people say isn't that all anyone wants question mark obviously it isn't but the point is it's there it's not like oh my god i've got to analyze it you, you just grab it you grab onto it you understand it and you care and it matters mm -hmm. and you're engaged so as a writer, so I think it's really important that that's to to not censor yourself and just go with that thought. And there you have. But in in society, and when you um, look at these ah, reviews, we're going to get taken. But you know, I've had reviews, and you just go, "Oh my god, a person can just just uh, you know, like two years' work can just criticize, ruin, and because it isn't." what a certain person thinks it should be but what it should be is what you've said which is why why does anyone want to read a book i think they want to be improved by it want to be made happier um so we've all gone quiet so because your because your phone isn't in the wrong position would you like to um has anyone how do you know what comments have been written when, um, i'm i'm scrolling i'm scrolling or through so silenced um no so we've, got, we've had a few people who are asking what the name of the book yeah we've gone through that um someone has said that sometimes um they don't get to write for days so i think that's when we were talking about sort of like the process of uh of writing yeah um what would you say in that then? yeah i think it's me i don't know about you helen but I, I feel like if you're sort of working on quite a long project um you you almost have to sort of dip into it most days otherwise you can come back to it and it's almost like a sort of 
a, a foreign, foreign place again. You've got, you've you, got to you, try. When I do my teaching things, which isn't very often because it exhausts me, I have to lie down after. Um, I say like pretending I'm perfect, which I'm not, but I do it with Mavis Cheek, which won't she won't be watching because it's too technical for her. You have to write every day. So Fiona Hughes has asked us, Abigail, so she's addressed you by your name, which is polite. What are you reading <laughs> in lockdown? Ah, right. Maybe fact, I'll, I'll, I will get it. So, okay, while she leaves the room and goes on holiday, I'll crack on. Um, the previous question, I um, hope I didn't cut the person off. I think it's helpful to write every day and sometimes life gets in the way and you can't. But mm. it's, there's a beautiful thing to be writing every day uh, and then you will grow the book. And what are you reading at the moment from Fred um, Hughes's question? Currently, um, Saving Missy um, by Beth Morrie. Um, it's, it's so beautifully written, but at the same time, it's, you know any of his books where it's like, it plot wise, not a huge amount happens, but it's the little moments of Ooh. this like person's day and the, the smaller interactions that they have this that make like a huge impact. It's hugely uplifting. I really is like it, it. Is it a comedy book or? I, I wouldn't say it's a comedy book, but not strictly. Um, but so when you say the little things, like, like what would that be? Like um, well, aphorisms this one is, or? Yeah, well, this one is a bit, is, is about a, a, an older woman who has kind of cut herself off from um, the people around her and the life around her because of something that she has got a lot of guilt about. I haven't actually discovered what that thing Ooh. is yet. Um, but through Ooh. sort of a number of small things, you know, meeting people, she gets given a dog that she has to look after, those sorts of things. She starts to come out of herself Ooh. a little bit more. Um, and she's really grumpy and prickly. And I just think that grumpy, prickly, older women are endless sources of amusement. But that's me, um, I'm grumbling and prickly, but I haven't written that book and I don't have a dog. But how lovely <laughs> to, how lovely for you to locate these pearls because it's like, you know, sometimes it's very um, difficult to understand or indiscernible why we connect, but it's the detail, it's the thing, yeah. it's the yeah, lack definitely. of dressing, is it not? Yeah, and it doesn't have to be like big moments. I mean, some people find sort of the, the bigger sort of slapstick comedy their kind of thing i'm i'm more into sort of the smaller observational um interactions the voice of the character that sort of stuff so and i love saving missy is good for so that. that one the missy one and i love the length of your sentences they're just tight it's i've got a dream editor which i'm sure you have but they're just easy and tight um so abigail and helen were you sorry to be going like this because i've got <laughs> next week Shall I've i join you coming back abigail because we can do this together we can make like a jigsaw of people um yeah. abigail and helen were you writing for a while before we both got published i thought it was before we both got pregnant um uh, because that's because <laughs> gotcha. upside down um were you writing for a while well i was uh, as a stand-up and a pretentious poet at 17 just wrote three what about you abigail were you <laughs> writing for a while before you both got published um i well i did i did i did a creative writing uh, uh part of my uni undergrad with creative writing and embarrassingly i <laughs> i did barely any writing on it what did you do um i did barely any writing on it and and i think i did my assignments um but my tutors tended to feel that stuff that was a little h harsher and perhaps a little more um, dark mm -hmm. uh, was more meaningful. And Ooh. so it didn't necessarily sit very well with me. But you were discovering um, yourself and it obviously exactly, wasn't, exactly. Uh, wasn't And everything bad. feeds in, in, into each other. Um, but then when I was a teacher and I had to set creative writing tasks, I would write, I would write at the same time that the kids did. Um, what you'd sit down in the room and say, today we're talking about apples or something and yes that's all right poems about that. yeah, yeah. It was, i'd it was, like it was... to do that could we just do some poetry about apples I'd, I'd like to have something i love to have a focus like if yeah if direction we had a focus, like if i have to do mm. an article oh, or something then sometimes you can just do it and it's a joy because it's over you do it and it's done um, yeah it's got a time limit as well that was what that was we, we was quite useful with the 
with the students is that you'd give them 15 minutes to do something and they had to produce you do it, it. You do and it. so but I always book, felt like a bit of a hypocrite you, if I didn't do it at the same time yeah. so yeah <laughs> but you've written your novel and what's amazing is you're now on your second one um yeah and you've got a proper grown-up agent do, does the agent yeah. go for lunch with you have you done do they pay yeah, for lunch yeah yeah my we went for lunch my agent that's what you um, have to do you have to go for lunch my editor, uh, you know one <laughs> it was it was a moment it was a moment i bought a new dress for the occasion yes um, in london ate, yeah in london in in Bow market and we had um look at it now. mashed potato that was mixed with white chocolate oh oh my god i've never heard of that what kind of restaurant it was that? nice oh my god nice. what as your main or your dessert sorry to be so it was it was, it was more of a side it was more of a side dish okay oh my in, god. in and amongst a chocolate themed meal Okay, was that the idea? Okay, so this is this has got to go in somebody's book if it's not ours. <laughs> it's like this is what life is about. It has to be themed and it has to be a bit different. It has to be grouped together, and so that's life. Themed, Very different, yeah. grouped together. Quip, grouped together. Themed, yeah. Comedy women in print. You, yeah. amazing. I know that was. I added that category. Um, Abigail, have we have we like talked for four hours? Uh, we have talked for about 35 <laughs> minutes. But Shall I it, see if there's any other last questions that have come through? I just, um, we've missed, the, everyone is so lovely and they've said really nice things. Yeah. But, um, somebody has you, asked, um, and this somebody is my, uh, my lovely cousin, um, do you, you self-edit what you have already written? Um, do you? Well, um... I try not to because I find you never get to the end. Do you, do you, do you find that as well, Helen? Well, do you write... You, sort of like as you're writing something to not really go back and edit yeah. it until you've actually got to the end. Yeah. you just got to put it down and then you edit later, in, in my yeah. view. But because I can't spell, um, it's, I'm forced to um, slightly rearrange the words so that... Well, the letters, really. Just that's minimum to make words. But you have to have faith in yourself and then be able to, for it to be ugly. Do you think? You've got yeah, to be all right about it being rubbish. Mm -hmm. um, because it won't all be rubbish. No, and even the little things like the, the grammar things or the, the phrasing of certain uh, sentences, you can that you might get rid of the whole passage, so there's no point wasting 15 minutes on no. it if you're going to eat that bit later. Oh, um um i'm so excited that you will we let shall we do this next week so then will <laughs> that will the phone go into more pictures like more sections so you and i can be in one section i'll learn how to make the phone go the right way up and then we yeah. have the next guest in the room what do you yeah think? we can ha yeah we can do that yeah and that means you've got to be there on wednesday yeah, I mean, not going anywhere, am I? <laughs> what does, um, okay, somebody said, Ab oh, somebody else said yes. So I just saw a comment that said yes. Oh, yeah, someone said, have either of you ever started a project only to question whether you should see it through halfway through? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it's very painful, the lovely person who wrote that. I think letting go of things is incredibly painful, um, but not everybody uh, is going to have a success with every project it's very rare isn't it so my yeah. office is full of things that have failed um and i actually don't know what has succeeded but a couple of things have succeeded so you have to sometimes abandon or just go there was a reason why it didn't work and also because i've had three drinks now two and a half it is luck and timing because mm it seems now that women are fashionable. Wit, wit is suddenly in, but I've been do it, trying it. You know, it's not been invented. It's just the time has allowed it to have a look in for, for a number of reasons, not just mm. even to do with an individual. What about you? No, I think, uh, uh, yeah, well, I, I mentioned about the um, historical novel that I uh, abandoned um, after writing. It would be possibly. amazing if that was turned into a Netflix. So I'll tell you what, Abigail, don't, yeah, don't be too sniffy about your historical novel. Do you know what I mean? No, I mean, the thing is, I read a lot of it and I am such a huge fan of period dramas. Like, um, but 
it just wasn't working and it might have been that it is not the project it was the time that i decided to do that project yeah. so and then i might, I might come back to it um, totally you know so with a decade down the line or whatever with that question some might say i'm a hoarder yes i am i cannot get rid of anything i've got poems that i've written you know really bad poems that i adore uh, that I did that Teenage Diaries, I actually was allowed to read one of my poems that I still have. It was really bad. And Rufus <laughs> Hound was um, ruthlessly horrible about it. But it's a joy to keep your stuff. Do not get rid of your stuff. So in answer, I'm now re reinvigorated. It could be timing. It could be because it's rubbish. Um, but it might not be. So I'm not being as uh, tight in my wordish as I'd like because I've had a couple but the whole point about this this wittering is that we do sip as we go don't yeah we? and because I think the expectation of people um somebody Fiona Battingham might be your relative says looking mm. forward to next week already I love that and I also like the use of exclamation marks because it's such a lift in these times so um because I'm nervous to know what button to press and how to record it because it's going this is going to go on the quick website comedy women in print uh website which will have the announcement all this is going to be kept and all your messages are going to be kept as well janet hogarth orna Jer author Jer is waving so um so what we'll do now is just before we leave abigail will you tell first of all what are your hopes for your second novel mm-hmm um, well, <laughs> a nice little casual question. I'm just, I'm just, about, just about going. I'm going into a big developmental edit, and so um, the the overall hope is that it is it's more complicated than the last one, and that I can actually sort of like pull it together. That I just pull it together, um, yes. and pull it uh, together. that that is my pull overall. It together. Hope. I, can get to I the think end, pulling it together. You'll weave it. You'll weave it and pull it. And yep. it will be excellent. I know that. Um, people Thank are you. saying, <laughs> some people have said um, uh, insightful, which is always a nice word. Um, that is a good one. I, I, I don't know which of us or a moment in time or a question got close to that. So what button do I press? Because I need to know. So right. ladies That's and gentlemen, just... Abigail is now going to instruct me because her <laughs> lovely face is going to disappear. And I don't want to lose this content. No, so we, we need to save it. So um, I think if I remember correctly, I it love, says, this is the teacher in you. Go on. This yeah. is the yeah. This is the this is the teacher coming yeah. back. I'll give you. I'll put a gold star on the um on the board. Please, what you have. would you? Yeah. Um, if the, if this goes well. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So there's like there's like a cross in the top corner, and then in a minute you're gonna press it. Um. There's only two might... arrows. There's live the word sixteen, which I think is members of my extended family. And then um, end on the right. Yeah, so you're going to press end in a second and then it'll say that it's ended oh. and it'll say how many people were there to, to come in to join us. Okay. And then there'll be a button that says save somewhere. <laughs> okay, and then I press And it. then you press that okay. button and, it, and then it will tell you that it has saved by flashing up the word saved. Okay. Um, so, I yeah, before you, you come off of it, press the button save. save. And I think that's a metaphor for everyone who's still with us thank you um <laughs> is that we just press save and and your word pervasive is it uh, means enduring and we are pers both pervasive and enduring um and please come and see us next wednesday both of us abigail and myself we're here to welcome you somebody's just joined um but alas we've got places to go yeah hopefully we've been marginally insightful and um Good luck and, and see you very, very soon. Okay, somebody's just messaged me. So. Evening, okay, everyone. I'm pressing end. Love you all. Press end. Comedy Women in Print, support us. Woohoo! Bye. End. Bye. Now.